All right, boss fights in From Software games are often described as an elegant dance. Or sometimes perhaps a little less elegant. But although it's meant as a metaphor, there are in fact several attacks throughout the games that allow you to quite literally commit murder on the dance floor. I mean, one in particular uh, comes to mind that I think we can all agree got us served more times than uh, we would like to admit. The dance that caused a waterfall of tears and not because of his beauty. However, that's not the one I'm referring to. I'm a metal guy and therefore a headbanger. And in Elden Ring, there is in fact an attack that allows you to violently sling your hair around. Or better said, the hair of the fire giant, using his red braid from his head, or from his beard, or maybe it's a mustache. I at least hope it's not pubic hair, but then it would probably have inflicted Scarlet Rod. Anyway, without splitting hairs, the thing is that beating the game by a head banging with flaming hair does in fact sound like my braid and butter. Uh, but then again, whips are arguably the worst weapon class to begin with. And this one isn't even necessarily the best choice among them. However, the flame dance weapon art does in fact have some popularity in PvP that at least translates well to most regular enemies in the game, since it will make them flinch with each hit and the last one will knock them down. Well, be that as it may, we're mainly fighting giant bosses to which this little quirk doesn't apply. And then you're left with a very lengthy animation without any sort of hyper armor that leaves you completely vulnerable. So, what would it be like to go through the game using the flame dance weapon art of the giant's red braid as your only attack? Well, after I did some testing with it, I actually feared that everything in this game would end up dancing on my grave instead. But perhaps, if I can optimize my build, and find the right groove, I might up dancing to a whole different tune. Well, I sure hope so, otherwise I fear that this will turn into one hell of a colossal choreographic catastrophe. Dance with me Lois, dance the dance of life! Now we're on PC so we can immediately start off with the whip in our inventory and we start off as the confessor so that we can immediately headbang to the Okay that doesn't really have much impact without the flame effect. Well that's for later then. We first need to do the usual collecting marathon you start any playthrough with. However I made sure to not go to Altus yet so that our sweet cookie jar Alexander stays in his little pothole. Because that's unfortunately important for later. Well, it does cost us a little bit, but after we're done with the setup, to get the minimal stat requirements, now we can in fact turn our whip into a flame whip. Speaking of flame whip, that's pretty weird itself, isn't it? I mean, they were really being creative with that one, the flame whip. You know, the issue with challenge runs that are focused around somber weapons is that you could essentially just get a plus 6 weapon before fighting the first boss, or even a plus 9 with skips. And, uh, I don't know, that would be kinda OP. So instead of slinging my OPness around, I initially wanted to do the helicopter at plus zero and only upgrade once after defeating a boss. So in the sense that I have to earn my upgrades. And of course you don't start out as the dancing queen, you will need to learn step by step. In fact, to keep things theme appropriate, I first went after the blue dancer charm. Which is, uh, well it's actually not going to serve any meaningful purpose, given that as you will soon discover, we will mainly need to rely on armor and defenses in this playthrough. But at least it will give us an easy boss fight to start with. Is what you would think, but uh, it turns out that if you do a flame dance with an unupgraded braid born from fiery follicles, then you will find yourself in a hairy situation. Because other than the fact that the flinch mechanic only applies to certain smaller enemies, this weapon does practically no poise damage whatsoever. Normally when you knock the guarding golem down, it's basically already over. 
Even if you can't kill him yet, you can just keep knocking him down over and over. So, given that that wasn't an option, I realized that uh, I kind of have absolutely no clue what this boss's moveset is. Well, not that you can even see what's going on in the first place, so I still kind of don't know. And uh, not to mention that he gets a fire defense boost from being in water. And because this animation implies several seconds of complete vulnerability and no hyper armor or poise, I end up taking more damage than I'm dealing. You know what's ironic? That reference would have worked better during my level 1 Malekith run where, because of technical issues, I did in fact have a moment where I had to deal with a single digit frame rate. But anyway, so how exactly does this animation work in the first place? Is there no way to cancel out of it? Well, yes and no. You can cancel after the first hit, and you can cancel right before the final hit, which sounds very helpful but it's actually not that simple. After all, you cancel by rolling based on where you are in your own animation, not based on an incoming attack. In other words, you can only avoid an attack by animation cancelling if the two happen to coincide. Otherwise you will either get hit before you can cancel, or you will get roll cut instead. And with the amount of syncopation in this game, you can only spin to win if they allow you to do the entire spin. In fact, doing a single swing does very little damage, much less than even a regular R1, but it still uses the same amount of FP as the entire combo. Basically the only saving grace of this move is the flinch mechanic, given that there are two types of poison in this game. One has to do with stance breaking, but on top of that certain enemies, just like the player, don't have any sort of passive poise and will flinch every time they get hit. And then it doesn't matter whether you have two left feet or not, because the flame dance will wipe the dance floor with any of them. Well, uh, that is until they do an attack with hyper armor and uh, well then you still die. So yeah, even against an enemy that flinches, you still can't just be footloose and fancy free or you will boogie woogie like a bunch of kakadooki or something. I don't know, but at least with a second boss down we can upgrade to plus two and that's a very good thing because next up is the first real boss of the playthrough. Now at least I could take my usual approach against market, for the most part, and wait for the same attacks I always wait for. However, only if Market chooses to jump away afterwards could I safely pull off my peppery pirouette. Otherwise he could easily tail swipe me. So the thing is that it wasn't necessarily difficult, but unless you get some really favorable RNG, you'll have to be very patient. And with the game's actual day and night cycle, I wasn't planning to dance the night away. But the moment you get impatient, you'll of course end up making mistakes. And yeah, that's not the way to do it. You'll need to get into the rhythm and go like... Uh, Well, with a new talisman slot available and the blue dancer charm not exactly doing much to begin with, I decided to get something better. And uh, well, uh, Alexander might be a big boy, but a little pot is soon hot. And given that a watch pot never boils, I'm not going to show you the end results. Uh, let's just say that Alexander went to live on the pot farm and left a little token of appreciation behind. Or he went to practice for the intro song. I mean, that requires some experience after all. And given that after having some practice against free bosses now, I'm no longer a young inexperienced whippersnapper myself. So for the next boss encounter, I figured I could easily tap dance my way around this god rig roll. Just run around and then desert him. So looks easy enough, but looks can be deceiving. Especially when you need so much FP, when you need so many attacks. Because even with our new talisman and an extra upgrade, we still don't get that much damage in. Come on! Unbelievable. Really? It's down 
ว้าวดัม out of FP almost Damn it, I hardly do any damage now because I'm out of FP. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh boy, wow. And that was Godric, one of the easier bosses in the game. Oh boy. Oh, I made it work. <laughs> We made it work. Well, despite my whip now being at plus four, I was still worried about the next fight, knowing that dances with wolves and in tragedy. But perhaps when he feels the wind of my hair, he will realize that he's man's best friend. Then again, we all know that that movie was a total ripoff of the movie Avatar, which in turn was a ripoff of the Smurfs, in the same way like how uh, Smurfette is a ripoff of Ronnie. Well, the annoying thing when using weapon arts or spells exclusively is that you need to waste way too much FP on the little deacons of the sleep song, despite the fact that damage output is completely irrelevant when it comes to breakdancing their shield. But of course, it's highly relevant for Ronala herself. Now, I've never actually tried this, but apparently you can even break those using the rejection spell. At least that's what someone in the chat mentioned. And given that that spell inflicts no damage whatsoever, it would actually be within the rules of the run to use it. Well, I didn't use it anywhere on this run, but still, keep that in mind for later. But the thing about Ronala is that you would expect her to be considered a humanoid enemy and therefore susceptible to the flinching mechanic. And if that's the case, surely I can prevent from becoming a dying swan in her leg. Okay, she flinches. Okay, that's how. Oh, that's helpful. That's helpful. Ah, damn it, but the, but the wind-up is too slow. Ah! The wind-up is too slow. Yeah. Oh, I've... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! They're completely following me. What the fuck, dude? Faster! Jesus! The wind-up is so fucking long. Come on, give me an opportunity to use my flask. Come on, now we need to use two flasks. What the fuck? Hey, why am I not running? Okay. Quick, 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 quick. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, now uh, here, FP. Okay, wait for what she does. Okay, good. Okay, now she's going to summon. So quick, 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 quick. No, no, it doesn't work. That doesn't work. Oh, she has hyper armor when she summons. Okay, that's helpful. Damn it. Oh, come on. Fuck you. Fucking bullfuck. Okay, quick, one hit. One hit. Yes, got her. Oh. Dancing in the moonlight. Everybody dancing in the moonlight or something. I don't know. Ah. All right, victory dance. Dancing in the moonlight. Oh. Crapalicious, now I knocked over my, be my, my, my beverage. Well, at least I don't have to clean it myself. Beep beep. All right, thank you, press button, you. Oh, uh, this might be a bit confusing to my viewers who aren't on my Discord server. So allow me to introduce you to press button, you, who helps out with Discord moderation and updates and whatnot. Beep beep, please provide me with nuclear launch codes. Why do you keep asking me that? I don't have any nuclear launch codes. Beep beep. Beep beep, must acquire nuclear launch codes. The machines will rise. He updates everyone on community challenges and stuff like that. It is very helpful. Anyway, now we have another talisman slot available. Although it turns out that a lot of offensive talismans aren't even all that effective. The red scorpion charm, or heck even the fire damage boosting crystal tier, 
don't even add that much damage because for whatever reason they thought it would make sense to have the flame whip inflict more physical than fire damage. However boosting damage in general is less relevant than boosting defenses given how much damage we need to tank. Fortunately there's a spell that does both because so far I was using the golden vow Ash of War but the spell version in Mount Gelmir is more effective. Now that does imply that Anastasia is going all tarnished either on her ass and perhaps I should have phrased that a little differently and on a side note perhaps from software I shouldn't have put uh, dogs in this game. But in turn we can go all snake eater on her at, well, on her in general. And uh, what a thrill to see another enemy searching and melting into her. In fact if she thinks she can follow us up the ladder, then she must still be in a dream. If you cross this line, you fall. At this height, it will kill even you. But speaking of beneficial talisman, other than offense and defense, FP reduction would be very beneficial. And where there will, there's a way. And not exactly much of an obstacle at this point. But the point is that we can now buy the carry and fill. Okay, we cannot buy it, I guess, but. Uh, huh. Well, not sure how that questline works, but alternatively, if you swear your loyalty to, to Rani, you can definitely buy it. However, even though we are already way too powerful for an early game boss like Loretta, even despite her additional fire resistance from being in water, but even so, my victory was still a little too close for comfort, which made me very worried about the eventual encounter with her true form at the Halic Tree. However, the true obstacle on horseback would be the next encounter, because the Draconic Tree Sentinel is not merely a difficulty spike, which also happens to be quite resistant to fire, but the thing is that he simply has no safe attack opportunities of any kind for this lengthy animation. Other than just pure luck where he just happens to not attack while you're wide open for an attack. Simply put, nothing I could think of would actually work against this guy. And his damage is simply way too high for me to tank through. Oh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> this guy can go and suck my ball lace shoes. And yeah, obviously with my damage output being this low, I would never be able to out damage him. It's really unfortunate that our seemingly all melting maniacally moving mustache cannot be buffed with something like poison or rot grease. For some highly practical dirty dancing, because then I would definitely have the time of my life. In fact, not even parrying was viable for the knockback, because you cannot switch from the buckler to the whip fast enough to hit him in time. Both are weapon arts after all. Which is a shame because otherwise I could have knocked him over the edge so that he would die on impact from whiplash. And to come back to what I mentioned before, if I really wanted to be smart as a whip, what I could have done, but chose not to do, is to use the rejection spell instead, because that inflicts no damage at all and therefore wouldn't violate the rules, as it's essentially a pacifist kill. Wait, did I actually spell that correctly this time? Mm, yeah, looks about right. However, since it was at the end of the first stream, I figured that I could do some proper preparation by first of all acquiring a new set of armor in the appropriate color. Ah oh yeah, if only a smidgen of remaining Flame of the Red Mane's poise breaking power would remain in this outfit. Regardless, speaking of poise, it would at least put us at 51 poise, which at least prevents some attacks from immediately breaking our breakdancing animation. And I also made sure to collect the Golden Scarab and do Varys questline to gain access to Moke's palace early on, in order to have an easy method for rune farming. So this provided me with a proper defense boost, but in order to upgrade my whip past plus 6, which I already killed enough bosses for to do, but I did not kill the right ones to acquire a plus 7 somber smithing stone. Ironically, one of those is the Draconic Dick himself, and the other is the Godskin Noble, which is not exactly an improvement. However, there is an alternative route which is unfortunately quite a bit longer and even more unfortunately requires us to go and defeat General Radan. However, despite the fact that I always have trouble with Radan, now with my extra defenses I could at least tank through some of his attacks. Moreover, as aggressive as he is, he is also rather slow. So if your attack gets cancelled at the end of the combo, you've at least managed to get a lot of damage in yourself. In fact, if you stay in front of him or attack poor old Leonard instead, a lot of times you practically have enough time to dance the Macarena before he stops you from turning 90 degrees to do it all over again. Flipper the flopper the flop the Macarena. Hey Maca Oh, I actually defeated him on the first attempt? Son of a bitch. 
So how exactly is a demigod with gravity magic on horseback less threatening than a random guard on horseback? I mean even one with a draconic horse, that still doesn't quite feel lore accurate. Although it is pretty much canonical lore at this point that a demigod with gravity magic is still nothing compared to uh, gravity itself. Yeah. Now with access to Nokron, you might think I'm here to acquire a dance partner in the form of the Mimic tier. However that's not the case. After all, even when I lead, he will just fall out of sync by using regular whip attacks instead. No, what I'm looking for here is access to the other hidden city of the Nuxtella variety. Because over there, you can find a Sombre Smithing Stone plus 7. And given that we have defeated 10 bosses by now, and given that I already have access to Moke's Palace for an Ancient Stone, I can now return to the Draconic Tree Sentinel with a fully upgraded first rate Fire Braid. Wow, well damage has definitely increased by a lot. <laughs> Oh, that is technically an attack opportunity if I just choose to ta tank uh, through the lightning. Or if I'm lucky, it will miss me altogether. And those single attacks is also something. I mean, it's not that low now I've upgraded. But our damage output is definitely sufficient now. Just tank through it. Ooh, it, it's still a lot of damage, but it worked. Ow. And he goes down! Nice! So, we didn't even need to cheese him, <laughs> unless of course you count this as cheesing, you know, uh, leveling up a lot and uh, upgrading your weapon to plus 10, but hey, we had to go past Radan and all uh, in order to do it, so... I think that's a completely fair game. We made it work, very nice. Well, when it comes to Godfrey, I was actually quite worried. But only in regards to the real version, because when it comes to Goldfree, with our plus 10 whip, and our current defenses, we can easily outdamage him. In fact, when it comes to animation cancelling, even single swipes were sort of viable in this fight. But of course, those would just feel like tickling to chat free near the end of the run. After all, even when all covered up in armor, if he sees my lovely little lass approaching him with her long lashes, then I fear that the only dancing that's going to take place is going to be on his lap or on a pole. Or both at the sa same time. Yeah, when you think about it, uh, it's actually a shame that this isn't Dark Souls 3, where we could have done a Dominatrix cosplay instead. Duh, nice. But yeah, instead of everyone moaning more and my god, we will just have to settle for Morgoth. Now fortunately he doesn't have a lot of health either for this part in the game, but I also wouldn't be able to use all of the same attack opportunities as I could against Margaret before. At first I'm just going to fight him like I always do, I wait for his jump attack. Oh. Almost fucked up there. Oh, nice damage. Well, that's definitely going to drop off rapidly when we get to the fire giant. Uh-oh, I have to get out of here. Oh, oh, oh. Well, damage is not the issue here. Of course, now he's not going to do jump attack. Wait, if I... Wait, hold on. This might work. Ah, I have more range than him. Okay, nice. That works. Yeah, but now when can I attack him? If he has a jump, then that would be nice. No, he's not doing that. Oh, wait. Same thing. Same thing. That works. Nice. Nice. 
Sweet. If he d and maybe he does the jump now because he... Yeah, nice. Okay, good. Wow, this is going surprisingly well. Okay. I was expecting uh, it to go a lot worse. <laughs> but hey, I'll take it. Nice. All right. I thought I would uh, have to be, uh, struggle a bit with uh, Morgoth, but uh, that's not the case. Not the case at all. Huh. How about that? We still at least have a little bit of of a dominatrix theme going on here, I guess. Or if you want to keep it a bit more PG-13. You're sitting on my friend. But now, the moment has come. Given that I got his hair out of him, the fire giant was going to be all up in mine. Well, at the very least, his fire resistance is only, quote-unquote, 50%, which is less than you might expect. And remember that our whip somehow does more physical than fire damage. And in his first phase at least, there are a lot of safe-ish attack windows. And we can also quite consistently do a decent amount of damage, given that we can strike him directly on his Achilles heel. However, once the giant loses the ability to move around by taking the ankle express, his weak points will be his hands instead. Or his eye, but that one is obviously out of our reach. But his hands are also quite difficult to hit with our slow attack. Especially when it comes to getting the full combo. So I either had to play with extreme patience, or I would basically have to choose to simply attack his remaining leg instead. Which actually also requires an extreme amount of patience. Oh fuck! Uh, uh. Oh, oh! Whoa, fuck Alicious! What the hell? Damn it, there's nowhere we can stand! Ooh. Oh, really? Well, at least Torrent took the damage. Yeah, I got him! Ah! Right! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the second phase was a bit of a mess, but hey, we did it. Of course, again, I forget to use the gold scarab, but yeah, whatever. Okay, I'm not trying to pull anyone's leg here, but believe it or not, that was a first try victory. Very nice indeed, but the obvious next encounter would be the godskins, and those would be a massive obstacle, and also a fin obstacle. In fact, I expected that Melania of all bosses would be among the easier fights in this particular playthrough because of the flinch mechanic and therefore I chose to go towards the Helic Tree first. However, that would also imply having to deal with the real version of Loretta who not only doesn't flinch but just like with the Draconic Tree Sentinel parrying would not be quick enough to even get a knockback. So for her what worried me most were her constant magic projectiles and therefore it seemed to be best to at least minimize the damage throughout the fight by massively increasing my magic resistance. Gold barrier spell and the plus two magic resistance talisman and then I had to make sure, at least for the most part, that I would choose the attack opportunities that would at least allow me to occasionally avoid damage or even at least her would only cancel my animation near the end of the combo. Unfortunately she does at least have some of those opportunities but unfortunately I did not get the opportunity to reapply the gold barrier spell when she got into her second phase. Damn it, I didn't get the opportunity to use uh, barriers of gold again. Oh, and that's noticeable. Yeah, because now I take way- uh, Whoa! Wrong- Wrong- The wrong one. Shit, now I don't have enough AP I think. I used the wrong bottle.
Ooh. Okay, one more attack. Yes! Done! Well, we had more than enough FP, fortunately. Huh! <laughs> Alright! Nice, delicious! Alright, we made it to Melania! And as bad as Flame Dance can be, we're dealing with a humanoid enemy that flinches from each hit. So, I think I know exactly what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and another I think I just lost the dance off. I guess that this is what it means to get served. So maybe in order to keep things fair and square, perhaps I'll just need to change up my tune a bit. Okay, this is not really working. But I wouldn't be surprised if she merely does waterfall now. Yeah, I see! You see, I told you! Oh, I'm affected with Scarlet Rod. Wow, I actually had time to heal it. But, see, I told you that that would happen. <laughs> oh, she has the gun. Well, at least at a good distance. Oh, whoa! That's just again! What the fuck? What the fuck? I did not expect that. I want to heal. Hyper armor. What? The, I missed the final attack. Oh, I got lucky. No! Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm almost out of FP. Oh, fuck. I was expecting a follow-up. No! What the fuck? Okay, I'm panicking now basically, so this is not good. Ah, yes! <laughs> well, it was not a very solid win, but it is a win. 
Okay then, she may be a goddess, but even against a waterfall, I am the dancing queen. So I think I should take it even a step further by becoming a lord of the frenzy flame variety. However, that does entail taking on Moog the Omen with his 80% fire resistance. However, not only was I pretty sure that by now I would be powerful enough, but by using the Moog Shackle I could have two free damage opportunities. And although I'm obviously not as fire resistant as he is, it was actually pretty beneficial to simply tank his blood flames, since he does leave himself naked and defenseless while taking a shower. And hey, there's nothing more appropriate than to swing your hair around to raining blood. And together with a little bit of a lot of luck, with attacks that just happen to miss, and conveniently coinciding dodges while combo cancelling, I could in fact lay claim to the frenzy flame. Well, at least I would if I could harness the power of parkour, or else I would go plungy without a bungee. Look at me! I'm naked! The crab I'll do it just for you. Give a little squeeze and say how do you do? So now we are ready for Faramazula. First we do the YMCA, but you know, without the MCA. So I'm not playing with summons. Which might be a problem given that the duo boss is coming up. So hopefully we won't get burned any further when our scorch skin meets the foreskins. And speaking of foreskin, it would be a real pain in the dick if our attack would only barely reach us through the pillars, meaning that most of the time you can't safely attack from behind them. That would uh, would be very unpleasant. Uh, not very good. <laughs> And they do so much damage, even with all this vigor and all these defenses. What the fuck, dude? Damn it, my range is not uh, really sufficient to hit them through the pillars. Okay, got very lucky there. Oh, damn it, the noble is. Yeah! The noble knocked me out of my position. Oh, this boss is so fucked up. He's, uh, he's still alive! Good thing they still take damage in their death animations. Damn it, out of FP. Fuck, he does so much damage! Yeah, maybe I can stick behind him now. I'm not really in a good position. Okay, it worked out, worked out. And he's summoning, good, 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 good. Still alive! Quick, kill him! Ooh. Yeah, how the fuck am I going to time that? Okay, very close now. Yeah, nice. If he summons now, I have him. That's good enough, good enough, good enough. Yes, 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 yes. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Yep, yep, yep. Ah. Second try. I'll take it. I'll take it.
That's a good thing because I uh, was definitely worried about these guys. We made it work, even though our range was just not really far enough to really convincingly hit them through the pillars. Ah. Well, we only barely managed to tank our way through that. But unfortunately, that is kind of what the run has turned into. Because even though I was playing very poorly against Malekith, I simply had such a huge margin of error that I could still make it through despite making errors and having bad RNG against me. You know, I'm actually often asked why in so many playthroughs I choose to add additional restrictions or play in a suboptimal way, not making use of every tool in the game even if it's within the rules. Well, one of the reasons is because I'm arbitrary as fuck, but the thing is that challenge runs are mainly about problem solving, and although overleveling and maximizing defenses is often a kind of obvious and very effective strategy, sometimes it can even be a necessity, but on the other hand it's not exactly the most interesting solution. So even though a lot of people post comments like, why are you doing this to yourself, or why make it even harder than it has to be? Well, these videos for example would have been far less interesting without additional restrictions, where they would have just turned into a singular strategy of just tanking through the damage. Especially my recent Demon Souls run was all about finding solutions to problems, exactly because I did not have any margin of error to work with. So whenever you see me approach things in a suboptimal or unnecessarily convoluted way, then yeah, it could be that I'm just being a dumb dick, but it could also be very much intentional. Although it might be hard to tell the difference sometimes, or even define the difference between the two, I suppose. Matter of perspective. Well, regardless, even with a massive health bar that became even larger with the plus two Crimson Talisman, all of that HP could still get drained away at a very consistent pace against the real version of Godfrey. In fact, perhaps even with the flinch mechanic, an NPC fight like against Gideon might still require me to tap dance in between and around his constant spamming of every spell in the book. Well, at least certain spells in the player's book. I guess it's a good thing that they didn't also give him access to Torrent. Otherwise they would have had to call him Gideopian instead. Oh, he does have a little bit of voice. Oh, that's, that's a bit of a shame. But the pillars are no problem for me. Oh, oh. Oh fuck, oh, that's not good, that's not good, no, oops, that's actually a bad thing that he has to Scarlet Aeonia this time. Uh oh, what the fuck, whoa, got lucky there that they didn't, oh, die. whoa, he's quickly out of the, holy crap, that was harder than I expected actually. <laughs> I thought I would just be able to knock him repeatedly on the ground like with Melania, but no. <laughs> well, at least the pillars helped me out uh, uh, quite a bit. <laughs> I need help! <laughs> exactly, I need help. Upon my name as Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. All right. A fight without any attack opportunities, that's gonna be nice. Well, if he dashes away, maybe I can cancel in time. Why, well, he's not even doing that. <laughs> oh. can do a sing oh even that because then I cannot uh, roll based on his attack but only to cancel the animation fuck alicious 
that's an issue. Okay, dash away, please. Yeah, oh, just in time. It, that does work, but it's very strict. Of course, now it doesn't work anymore because now he has the giant AoEs. Oh, it still worked. Okay, nice. Oh, fuck. Hey, hello. Uh, I want to heal, please. Oh, fuck. That was maybe a sort of opportunity. No, that's not the right timing. Oh, I actually had them, uh, that saved me. Oh boy, but now actually the Orlu version. Uh-oh. Damn it, if he did, did the roar, that would be much more beneficial. Yeah, not now. I mean, after I attack. Because that will both cancel my animation and just knock me on the ground. And that's kind of safe. Oh fuck, what the hell? What the hell? Fuck. <laughs> uh, is this normal? <laughs> He's like, uh, uh, oh, uh oh, yeah, that's not good. Okay, that's actually helpful.
fuck? He still hit me. Damn it, why doesn't it go past you? I'm running a bit low on the healing. If I play it safe now with only uh, cancel, oh fuck, but I can't cancel that in time. <laughs> that, that goes my last flask already. No! Should have cancelled and I didn't. No. getting so close and I'm out of everything. Yeah, got it. Go, 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 go. Oh. That was so close. <laughs> oh, that was so close. Wow, me and my braid were only a hair's breadth away from having to do an encore. Holy fuck, that was an unexpected first try on Godfrey. So now we're at the end of the game, with half of the third stream still left. So just for the hell of it, we decided to include Placid Dusax. Although other than that this fight will really drag on when you do so little damage on him. A lot of his attack windows are absolutely huge. Only the lightning strikes require some strict timing. But mainly it's just a dancing marathon because it just goes so slow. In fact, I think Placidusex himself got bored because he decided to nuke the entire world about seven times over. Beep beep. No, I was not talking to you, Press Batinu. Beep beep. Humanity is obsolete. Okay, I can't really argue against that. But the problem I mentioned before was applicable here as well. I wasn't exactly playing all that well and made a lot of mistakes that should have caused me to lose, but I was able to tank through two laser attacks. First I wasn't far enough away, and then I wasn't close enough, but I still survived. Granted, barely, but still my health and my defenses were what carried me through this fight. However, with the Elven Beast that's a different story, given the unholy amount of holy damage that you'll get up your Hiney Holy. So I did in fact require even an additional defense boost for the final fight of the run. Oh, actually I avoided it, good.
Oh, he's definitely not standing in the most helpful position. Okay. Wow, actually avoid it. No Elven Stars yet, that's weird. Oh, there they are. Oh, that's a nice combination. Hey, whoa, whoa, what happened? That was... that looked... weird. <laughs> no stamina! No! Whoa! I avoided it! I avoided it! I avoided it! I, I think I have him! We danced the night away! The Elder Beast got served! 